Hello, everyone, and welcome to our virtual classroom again. I am Vivian Stewart, and welcome to video number seven in our OER series. Our starting point, as always, is at our library's homepage, and our address is www.southwest.tn.edu forward slash library. The two resources that we will look at today are bookmarked on our library's homepage. So I am simply scrolling down, but this time I am not going to the Open Educational Resources page. I am going to our databases page. Now on our databases page, people are able to access not only our library subscription databases, but we also have recommended websites and multimedia items also. So under the heading of education, I am expanding. And under recommended websites, I am now going to the directory of open access books, which is also referred to as DOAB. So let's just take a look at this page. First of all, we can perform a search at the very top. You may want to look at the support page, and I suggest that you select the language before you even start. DOAB currently has 36,563 books in it. If you were to check next week or next month, I'm sure that this number would have increased. And what's good about this, it says these are peer reviewed, which means um, your colleagues who are considered to be experts have reviewed these books. We're able to perform a search here if we would like. We can browse by subject, language, or publisher. As I scroll down a little bit, you can see the top subjects are displayed. And then there is additional information, which is down near the bottom of the page, which you may like to read. So let's perform a search in DOAB on health and wellness. Okay, we're waiting to see what we actually find on health and wellness. We have 587 books. Okay, so our filters, which are normally on the left-hand side, are showing up on the right-hand side. So if you would like to create an account here, you actually could. As I scroll down, look at my results list. Of course, you have the covers of the items. You have the titles listed, you have your author's name, and you have a brief summary of the item. I am interested in the third one entitled Health Promotion at School. So I am selecting the title. On the next page, this is what we have. We have the cover. We can see the type of license that we have. This is our download URL. I have the author's name. This is in English language, and we can view the full item record. We have a description of the book. We can export out the citation if we wanted to. And then this is just the description. It provides us with the ISBN number, the publisher, publisher's website. Even see the number of pages in the book. I can find out about my um, license here, or I could have the diagram, which we are accustomed to seeing. And of course, we know that the first one lets us know that we will have to acknowledge the author. The second one lets us know that we cannot profit from using this. And the next one says ND, um, and I'm not sure what ND stands for. So let me show you how you find out what this stands for. Just simply select book license and you are given a description of the different ones. So it seems as though for ND, we are allowed to copy, distribute, display, and perform only verbatim copies of your work. So you are able to use this work, but you cannot make any changes to it. So I am about to close this out, and we are ready to actually view the book. So this is our URL. The book is loading up. It has 163 pages. Your two options will be to select a page from the left hand side, or we can use our scroll bar. But the entire content of the book is here for you to use. So this is how you would use DOAB. 
we are closing this out. Back in our databases page, we are now going to the category of electronic books. Under recommended websites, I am selecting Project Gutenberg, which you may be familiar with. Project Gutenberg now has over 60,000 free books. So books that are now available in the public domain have been placed here. So these are books where either um, it's so many years after the author had died or the copyright has been expired for over X number of years. So of course this project is still um, having new books added to it. So let's start by taking a look at the home page. If we want to learn more about Project Gutenberg, we can actually start here or you can even have contact information. We have the ability to search and browse, to perform a book search. We can look at the bookshelves, frequently um, downloaded books, and then they have some offline catalogs. If you need any help with your searching, you could go to the help option. So we can easily perform a quick search here. It says that we could click here for the for more of the latest books. And then as we scroll down, just it's additional information about how you could perform searches, how to get help. Um, special areas are listed in terms of use. And then if you want to follow them on social media, you can. Now, when I think about Project Gutenberg, I think about um, literature type classes um, where your students may have to find classic type books or um, they have readings, but you don't necessarily want them to have to be checking out a lot of books where they may be able to find electronic copies here that they would have access to. So one title that comes to mind for me is the Canterbury Tales. So let's perform a search to see what we can find. Okay, so I have some results. And it says that we can sort alphabetically or sort by release dates, but I have 10 results. So of course I have the cover and I have the title. Of course, the author is Godfrey Chaucer and it tells me how many downloads these books have had. There is also an audio here that I can actually listen to. So in addition to books, there are audios that are here also. I think that I would like to look at the Canterbury Tales and other poems. So I am selecting the title. So now as I scroll down, it tells me um, that there are 14 books in this collection by Godfrey Chaucer. So I have the title, and this is the way that you can download this book. The first one says, read this book online, generated HTML. So if I select this particular link, this is the way that it looks. And if you have no problem, now remember there are no images, so you know if you don't mind reading it in this format, you know, feel free to just download it from here. And you can actually start reading. Let me go back. There's one that says EPUB, no images. Now, selecting this link would not work for you. What you need to do is go over here. It says you can send this to Dropbox. You can send this to um, the Google Drive, or you can send it to the Microsoft OneDrive. There's something that says Kindle version, no images. So maybe if you have a mobile device, if you have a Kindle, you could download it on that. I have something that says plain text UTF-8. So there is no way to send that anywhere. So let's just take a look at that one. See what it looks like. Let's see, it looks very similar to the other one. We are going back and it even says there are more files. So if we click here, there is some text files and a zip file that you can actually access it from there. I have an option that says similar um, books. Readers also downloaded these particular books. I have the bibliographic record for the book. I can see when it was released. I can see the number of downloads within the last 30 days, and I can see the subject headings that have been assigned to it. 
Now, if you have uh, with your cell phone, you may be able to scan, but I'm not sure if the scan would I should just bring you to this page or if by chance it will let you access the books. I am not sure. Now, I performed a title search, so let's just try to perform a, um author search. So let's try using Charles Dickens. No, I'm sorry. Let me try somebody else. Let me use Edgar Allan Poe. Because I have seen students coming in looking for his stories. So we could sort through these alphabetically or by release dates. And there are 25. This is 1 through 25, but then there's a next page to go further. So which one would we like to see? Let's try the Raven. This is the cover. And just as before, we could read this book online. We have the EPUB no, with images this time. And once again, you know you need to send it on to the book drop, Google Drive, or OneDrive. You have Kindle with or without images. And once again, it says more files. And you have more options there. And this is Project Gutenberg. So just like with the other source, if you were to check back next month, you may see that the number of books that have been added to this collection has increased. At this point, I'm about to close this out. I'm back on our databases page and going back to the library's homepage. I am about to stop sharing my screen. So this is the end of video number seven. I hope that you will join me for video number eight in this series. And I hope that you will share this information with others. Thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to you returning again. Have a great day.